Austin, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, I'm really, really excited about the work you've been doing lately in the Angular community. Thank you, me too. Yeah, so you do a lot of graphing related stuff, or not graphing, sorry, visualization related stuff, um, and graphing, mm -hmm. but what I'm most excited about is the stuff you've been doing with the WebVR, and the WebGL stuff, and you basically just gave Angular their version of React VR. Yeah, it's uh, it's really exciting. The virtual reality stuff is just so hot and cool right now. It's awesome to be able to work on that, and uh, you know, there's a lot of different tools out there right now, and having uh, the ability to do it in Angular, I think, is extra cool. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. So Angular. Uh, these guys are like stupid smart, mm -hmm. which is kind of like an oxymoron. <laughs> and you, because you gave us Angular VR, NGVR, <laughs> the new thing. Yes, yes, <laughs> NGVR. But they uh, they made it where we could actually use Angular for a lot of different things, mm -hmm. and that's really cool because like we're seeing people use it today for uh, you know the desktop and native mobile and rendering stuff on the server side, mm -hmm. which is craziness in all these different engines. And so I had the idea, I was like, okay, well, we can do this with all these different things. What if we could use it for virtual reality as well? And so there, there's like a bunch of projects out there now that kind of look like Angular. Like there's this one called A-Frame and mm -hmm. it essentially looks like I'm making HTML in Angular code-ish. And I was like, that would be super cool if I could do that with Angular. And so one of the projects that I'm working on is I actually implemented a WebGL renderer mm -hmm. for Angular. And so you can write your WebGL code just like you were writing forms and things like that. So I think it's super cool. That is so amazing. Is it is it on NPM already? Uh, it's not on NPM. Um, I was recently at NGConf and I gave a talk on it and we are working on getting it where it was production ready. Nice. Right now there's, uh, you know, it's, it's not the most performant. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, we want to make sure that it's like solid and ready to go before we kind of put it out there and start pushing it. Oh, well, you could be like 0.5.1 <laughs> zero, zero, one. <laughs> yeah, or something like that. Um, it is on GitHub though. Okay, so good, good. It is on GitHub. Uh, you can see like some demos of it online already. Yeah. You can, you know, take your, you know, if you've got a daydream or a cardboard or mm -hmm. insert whatever VR device, an Oculus Rift, you mm -hmm. can go to the website. And when you kind of put it on, it will, uh, it'll be like, do you want to enter virtual reality mode? And yeah. My demo is I've got some like balls that are flying at you. Yeah. I feel like I need like one of those disclaimers. That's like you need just your face to be those balls. <laughs> No, that would be way too that'd scary. That'd be so cool. I'm I should put little project. Angular Angular logos. Yeah, that'd be good. Angular be logos. Good. They're awesome. like, stop with the Angular. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that would be awesome. <laughs> so, um, like, what was one of the most, I guess, from a technical perspective and implementation of this, what was the hot, sexy stuff there? Yeah. Um, or is so it not interesting because Angular makes it so easy? A little bit of both. So, I mean, just being able to write something. So, you know, if you've ever looked at uh, libraries like 3JS or things like that, they kind of remind me of like what it used to be like to develop JavaScript code like mm -hmm. seven years ago, okay. right? Where it was really, you know, difficult to follow big, you know, files of, you know, code that, you know, very error prone. Mm -hmm. And so, by breaking it down into components and making it, you know, very Angular component esque, mm -hmm. it makes it so much easier to be able to write this code and understand where it's at and what it's doing. Mm -hmm. And this is this is not easy stuff. Like mm -hmm. WebGL and, and and building 3D interfaces is really hard. Actually, you have to know a lot of math, way more math than I'm good at. <laughs> right. um, but. Uh, it, it, it is really hard, and so being able to, you know, use Angular's awesomeness to do that, it's it's really amazing. So you can take something that's like a hundred lines of code right. and make it like twenty. Yeah. So that's really exciting. To and me. then you've uh, you have everything using RxJS, right? 
Or do we need to take your code and refactor all that? <laughs> Is that a good um, code for us to refactor? It's just components. So okay. if you want to use Rx to feed it the data. Well, um, like to, 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 to log the events. Like um, or not to log the events, but to. Interact with right. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, Basically, what the project does is, uh, I talked about 3JS earlier. Right. It kind of is a wrapper for 3JS. Mm -hmm. So all I'm doing is kind of breaking down 3JS is like, they literally have uh, pieces or like pieces of code called objects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of breaking nice. these objects, terrible name, mm -hmm. these objects <laughs> down into components and making it where you know, you can use them like you were gonna, you know, put in a drop down. Uh -huh. And so there's not a lot of like, it's just mapping kind of like a one to one. So mm -hmm. there's not a lot of opportunity for, you know, type that type of like. Like multiple streams of data. Multiple streams of data type thing, unless you're feeding the data in and yeah. it's totally possible to do well, that. What we could do is we could have somebody have a joystick and then. Yeah, that's a shoot, great use case. They shoot the Angular logos at you or the Austin faces at you. Oh, right? That would be great. Like a joystick. I, yeah, yeah. I, I should get with you to make this demo. We should do this. Much better. Oh, yeah. this excites me. Yeah. All right, so um, where can we find you on the internet? Yeah, so I do a lot of, I'm an open sorcerer. <laughs> AngularAir.com. Yep, so Angular Air. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on every week, NG Panda. Mm -hmm. um, and we talk about all kinds of awesome stuff in the Angular community. Um, I'm on Twitter. Uh, my handle is AMCDNL. Mm -hmm. And that's my same handle on GitHub. I've got a number of like open source projects, this being one of them. We do, uh, I work on a lot of data visualization stuff. So yeah. we've got a lot of really cool projects around visualizing data where we're using Angular to actually draw SVGs, yeah. which is super cool. Um, so it's kind of the same concept as this. and. Uh, yeah, so check me out there. I'd love uh, to, you know, give back to the community and talk about tech stuff all the time. So yeah. yeah. Okay, but did you know that Ben is creating a new reactive visualization library? Ben, it's always taking all the good ideas. But I'm just thinking, what great collaboration, right? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Um, we should we should totally get together with him. Yeah. He's always stealing all the good ideas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That guy. I, I got him to rename his project T Rex. He's calling it Tiny RX. <laughs> T Rex. T Rex is so much better than Tiny RX. <laughs> we made a, a drag and drop library, and it was called Angular D and D, yeah. and we renamed it to Angular Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, well, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you very much. Hey there, are you into reactive programming using JavaScript? Do you have to deal with asynchrony in your web app? And join this dot instructor Ben Lesh to learn all of the ins and outs of RxJS in his hands-on workshop. Available online and in person, go to rxworkshop.com for more details and to book your spot today.